All right. So we have a trip coming up, leaving tomorrow morning, going away for five nights, two different states. First, heading over to California, and from there, heading over to Montana uh, for work purposes, although not military work. All right, so this is business brand work. And I'm going to document some of it, this being kind of step one, and I just did my layout here for for the trip. So this process that I just did, that I'm about to share with you guys, is something that's been ingrained in me due to many, many years in the military, where we do this pretty much every time before we go anywhere. We establish a packing list of all the things you're going to need to go do the, the job. And then you lay it out on the floor. Here, I'm using my bed, but every item, boom, 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 and you just go down the list. And that is just sound practice, really. It's military in nature. Okay, fine. But, you know, it's just, it's a way to ensure you have all the shit you need. You know, and the packing list is something that is typically created by seniors, by leadership. Um, but it's valuable to everybody. You know, so obviously the, the junior kid in the team who's never been anywhere before, he's going to need that guidance. He doesn't fucking know what he needs to go do this thing. So it's on us as leaders to to ensure that, that he's squared away, that he's good to go. But also for us as leaders, as seniors, guys that have been around for a while, guys that have the experience that have, may have done this exact thing 10 times, you know, a packing list is, a, is just a solid way to QC ourselves to ensure that we have all the things that we need. So it's a practice that I've now, I've done so many times. I do it when I travel regardless of for the purpose. So we'll share here with you what this looks like. And, you know, I, I travel as light as I can just in general. Um, this being five nights, And I really don't have a need to get dressed up for anything. So I'm just going to be using this Mystery Ranch. Uh, It's like a three-day assault pack here. This is a Jim Reaper's Velcro patch I just threw on there. But I'm just using this uh, this Mystery Ranch assault pack to transport all my gear. That's it. So no checked luggage, nothing. And this is what this looks like. Okay, boom. Here's all my shit. So socks, underwear, uh, I got a pair of shorts because it's hot and I'm going to California, which is going to be hot. So <laughs> there's that um, gym shorts and right here. Uh, these actually, these are hot off the presses. So, I mean, by the time this video drops, these will be available. These are through our partnership with Jim Reapers, those guys. Uh, I'm actually bringing these as gifts for a couple of the guys that I'm going to spend some time with. Just a bunch of t-shirts because all I really need, again, is clothes to uh, to train in and to be casual. You know, cell phone charger. I got my laptop. This is all my laptop uh, BII, the military term for, you know, the extra shit you need for an item. So this is just... You know, power adapter, there's a little mouse in there, external hard drive, you know, whatever. Reading, which is critical. I've actually already read this, but I'm going to read it again. Uh, And this is just a nice travel size book because it's it's small. Hygiene kit, nothing creative or fancy there. I'm going to talk about this stuff here for a little bit more in depth. You know, so as an amputee or really as someone that, that uses a prosthetic, there's this shit that you need really to... To deal with problems, um, and just for like basic function. So this is a spray bottle here. This just has a little bit of rubbing alcohol and water mixed into it. I use this to help me get my leg on my body, and I'll do a more in depth detail with a more in depth video with with prosthetic or um, with amputee prosthetic stuff here. But just a quick rundown for now. Hand towel mostly to deal with sweat, which is the fucking nemesis of any 
one who's using a prosthetic with a traditional socket setup. Here's an extra belt. So I use a belt in conjunction with a suction socket uh, as part of my method of suspension, which is a really fancy way of saying the way in which the prosthetic is attached to your body and stays attached to your body. It's called a method of suspension. So I use a belt. So I bring an extra belt. Uh, inside here is the charger to my to my knee, my X3, which is the knee that I wear most of the time. This is what I use to charge it up. I plug it in. I could probably get through five nights on a single fully charged knee, especially with the amount of activity that I'll be doing out there, which isn't going to be all that much. Uh, but obviously, this is something that I don't leave the house without. Um, and then this right here, this is a this is just a, a kit, right? So I have, let me think, I have at least three of these. They're all the exact same. Um, this one right here is exclusive for when I travel. I keep one of these in my truck, and I have another one of these in my go bag at work. And this just has a bunch of stuff in it, hand sanitizer, some Loctite, some sanitizing wipes, some new skin, which... I actually got this in Japan, I believe. Um, this is for like emergency situations. This is not an ideal scenario if you're busting this out to treat an open wound on your residual limb. But that is why it's there. Different screws and other components. You know, so basically just spare parts and ways to switch out components and pieces if and when shit breaks down, right? Wrench, yep, maca, I got an, uh, or I'm sorry, pliers, wrench, flathead, Phillips, a couple other things in there. So just, you know, standard toolkit, maintenance kit, if and when things break. And every single thing that you see in front of you right now is there because at some point something happened And I didn't have what I needed to fix the problem. So I learned through pain and discomfort and embarrassment and all that shit, which is how we tend to learn stuff. So this this goes with me everywhere I go. It's probably only a matter of time before I break something else and need a tool or a piece of something that I don't have with me, which is then will lead to this kit expanding. Um, and then lastly, are my collapsible crutches. These guys right here, they break down pretty small, as you can tell. Um, you just fold them out. You know, they lock in place, and then there you go. This is, again, purely for emergency situations. Um, I, I tend to bring the crutches with me no matter what. If I'm going someplace for an extended period of time, then I would bring extra prosthetics with me, extra knees, extra feet, an extra socket, extra liners, like all the stuff that I that I use every day. If I was going for an extended period of time, then I would bring actual extra prosthetic stuff. Five night trip uh, in the States. Yeah, it's a bit of a risk, but with these crutches here with me, like I can I can get around with those. Even if my leg completely explodes while I'm walking down the street. And I'll be able to make it back to wherever my crutches are located, say in my hotel room, and then I'll be able to remain mobile. That's that's all that that's all that matters to me, is that I can I can I can get mobile again. Um, I've only had to use these crutches I think once. I've had them for like I don't know nine years, eight years. I think I've only had to use them once uh, because again, if I'm going someplace for an extended period of time, I'll bring a more robust pair of crutches, like bigger ones. That are a little stronger, a little more durable. These aren't designed to put a lot of miles on. This is like this is like your donut in your car. You know, your donut tire. It's like just to get you to the to the service station. It's not meant to put a lot of miles on the road. That's what these crutches are here to do. So that's it. That's that's the uh, that's the layout. That's what I'm rolling with here. By the time this drops, I'll document. You know, I think a bunch of little pieces from this trip coming up, but. By the time this drops, you guys may have already been able to see uh, where I'm going. 
So it probably won't be a surprise, but I will just say that I am heading to San Diego to link up with some guys, some special ops guys. Uh, if you know anything about the special operations community, you could probably guess uh, the unit that tends to spend time around that area, both in the uniform and then post uniform. And, uh, you know, one of these guys I'm going to see uh, is, is someone I consider a mentor of mine, someone that I've actually learned quite a bit from. So I'm personally excited to spend some time together and uh, it's going to be good. So I'll throw some more of these together, but layout complete. We're going to pack things up here and then uh, we're going to hit the road fucking early. I got a 0530 flight tomorrow. You know, every time I do this to myself, like, you know, the night before, like right now, like there had to be a reason why I booked a 530 flight. But, you know, I got to wake up early as shit, you know, tomorrow. I like to wake up early, but I mean, to wake up at zero, what the fuck, just so I can get to the airport is kind of a pain in the ass. But, <clears throat> you know, it's all good, man. You know, traffic will be light. Uh I would assume, I'm thinking, traffic at the airport will be light. So the process for me getting to my house onto the plane should be relatively seamless. And then I got a long flight ahead of me. So, you know, I got some time to catch up on some sleep if I need to. We'll talk soon.